Our Story Productions presents the Cockleburr Morning Show, where we read out the big stories from throughout Sweet Swine County with Bobby Ray and Sally Sue. Thank you, thank you, and welcome to the Cockleburr Morning Show. Ladies and gentlemen, we are excited to announce that we have just completed our first year uh, here on the Cockleburr Morning Show. That's amazing. I'm telling you, it's amazing. And we want to thank you, our viewers, for uh, taking the time to watch us and to enjoy what it is that we have to present to you on a regular routine basis. So, Oh, um, I, can I say it's been quite a year. Oh, it has. Oh, it it's has. just been. We've had so many great guests mm -hmm. and great reports. Mm -hmm. And today we're going to take a look. Mm, are we? Okay. On our highlights of the shows that we have had this year. This is going to be a lot of fun. And especially oh, now yes. that we have a million plus households this in the Twin Cities. Amazing. It's outstanding. We're in the it's Twin just outstanding. Cities, a million. Yep. Oh, That's I outstanding. can't believe it. Yes. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to share stories that we've done inside and outside of Sweet Swine County. So, Yes. What do you think? Here huh? we go. We have great citizens throughout Sweet Swine County, mm -hmm. and they make our show possible. So we are going to share stories from inside and outside of Sweet Swine County? Well, no. We're only going to show stories that we've done outside oh, okay. Sweet Swine County. Okay. Though Sweet Swine County has many great citizens True. who make our show possible, but you know what? Not much happens there. Well, that's true, Sally Sue. Yeah. You know, I think we should start with a segment that we feature on every show. Oh, oh, pray tell. What that has that become be? very important part of our oh, viewers' yes, yes. day. Uh -huh. And I you know what it is? Oh, you know what yeah. it is? I imagine. Bobby Ray, Weekend Adventures. That's right. Each week. Each week. I uh -huh. share with our viewers what I did over the weekend. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and based on the emails that I'm receiving. Oh, I'm sure mm -hmm. you are. And your assistant is helping with that. Soon. Yeah. Yes. Oh, soon. Amongst other things. Yes. And our viewers recognize I am the expert. Oh. Okay. Okay. On what is happening outside of Sweet Swine County. Well, of course. Of so, course. There you are. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's take a look at the places that Bobby Ray has visited. Let's do that. Yes. Well, I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, get ready, because once again, it's time for... Bobby Ray's Weekend Adventures! You know, Sally Sue, this weekend I visited courthouses. I visited some places that have some of the most magnificent architecture you've ever seen. Really? I don't know if I told you this, but I, one of my passions is courthouses. Another passion. Oh yeah, I have many passions. I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm learning a, that. I'm, I'm a like... passionate person about many I things, see. okay? okay. Anyway, I got on the computer found out where some of these courthouses oh, were, good. got in my car, I do a lot of research, got oh. in my car and drove around southern Minnesota and checked out some of these courthouses. Oh, yes. Okay. And, I was, and here's what I found. I took okay. some notes, okay? Oh, where'd you go? All right. I went to the Faribault County Courthouse oh. in Blue Earth. Blue Faribault Blue County, Blue Minnesota Blue. is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. Really? The building was completed in December 1892 at a cost of, are you ready for this? Okay. $70,000. $70,000? You can't even buy a good vehicle for that price no, anymore. No, no, you can't. Amazing. Of wow. course, there's the famous Martin County Courthouse. Oh, yes. That's located in Fairmont, mm -hmm. Martin County, Minnesota, obviously. Mm -hmm. It features a high copper dome with four Ooh. clock faces. It's very, Ooh, and it's beautiful, pretty. and it's beautiful inside. Oh. The building was designed by Charles E. Bell and built by J.B. Nelson in 1907. Oh. So that was a little bit further ahead than the one in Fairbowl yes. for a cost of $125,000. Oh, Unbelievable wow. prices, okay? Wow. Of course, today that would be a lot of money. Yes, yes. And, and the final one I went to was the Cottonwood County Courthouse. Mm -hmm. That's located in Wyndham, Minnesota. It was built in 1903 at a cost of nearly $60,000. So that was... Lesser, lesser of the of three. three, yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. The building is crowned with an octagonal drum, which supports a segmented dome, okay. two stories above the level of the roof. Wow. Pretty unbelievable architecture wow. for that time. A figure of justice stands on top. Oh, how impressive. Very much. Wow. 
Shallow segmented domes painted silver top the four large corner pavilions. Oh, oh. Oh, it's just I magnificent. It. And it was the lowest price of all of them. They got good bidders back I, there. I, I... So, Bobby Ray, did you have an exciting weekend? I have to tell you, Sally Sue, I make it my mission to be the most informed person from Sweet Swine County as far as history is concerned. And yes, I had a great weekend. Uh, why just outside Sweet Swine County? Well, you know, our fan base is expanding for the Cocklebur Morning Show. So I think really? it's important that people understand that one of my duties is to represent this show in oh, southern Minnesota. Definitely. Okay? Definitely. And besides, yes. the, uh -huh. uh, the uh, executive producer gave me an expense account, so I use it. Excuse me? Yeah. Well, it's an expense account? Don't get all excited. It's only $2.55, but it's moving up. <laughs> I spend every penny. Okay. okay. Well, why don't you tell us how you spent your expense account Sally Sue, I went over to the town of Tracy in Lyon County. Oh, yes. Okay. Have you ever yes. It's a pretty cool uh, town. No, I haven't. But it is yeah. a... I love that town. It's a cool yes. town. You know, we have a lot of fans in Tracy. I have a lot of fans in Tracy, which really? I didn't realize. Yes. Really? I went into the Tracy Bakery, which okay. is on Main Street. Oh, nice. And immediately... They recognized me, which was oh, very impressive. Okay. And I know that because she stood behind the counter and said, how are you? <laughs> really? Not everybody does really? that with me. So, Bobby Ray, you went over to Tracy just to visit the bakery? No, Sally Sue, although believe me, that would have been enough of a reason to go. Really? Oh, I'm telling you what, their baked goods are made from scratch. Ooh. They've been in business for Ooh. 50 years. They are oh. just outstanding, okay? Yummy. Oh, my Yummy. gosh. I'm telling you, can't you tell? I had a few <laughs> over the weekend. Oh, I see. But I'm here to tell you, I got some for our owner, J.R. Olson. Oh. He Honey. thinks we're the greatest, let oh, me tell you. That's such a good idea. I thought it was a good idea. Good boy. Yep. That's Absolutely. How you spent your money. Absolutely. Huh? Cool. Anyway, the real reason that I went to Tracy on top of that yes. was to go and visit the Wheels Across the Prairie Museum. <gasps> oh, really? and, I, and I brought back a brochure, so I'd kind of like to read oh, this to you. Oh, share it with <clears> us, please. In 1977, a small group of citizens embarked on the long and often frustrating task of erecting a memorial to those hardy pioneers who stayed with this often wild land. The purpose was to collect wheels from all facets of their lives, agricultural, railroad, and automotive, plus all the little wheels, which helped this county grow and prosper. Uh -huh. The Wheels Across the Prairie Museum opened its doors on June 1, 1985 to share the story with visitors. Oh, Bobby, <laughs> I do have to admit that you discovered some great places. Oh. I'm telling you. Wonderful. Well, I have to thank you, Sally Sue. I'm sure our viewers uh, wish we had more time to show some of these, but mm -hmm. we have to move on. <laughs> you know, we've also had guests who are truly making a difference in our communities. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, definitely. Musical guests who have entertained us and our viewers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And guests who have shared their interesting hobbies and businesses. Yes. And you know, one of our favorite guests who is making a difference is Terry Golden. That's true. Who, well, what do you say? Let's just take let's a look. Let's take a look, you let's bet. Yeah, absolutely. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's bring out this morning's guest. Yes. From the county of Rock, in the city of Laverne, we'd like to welcome Terry Golden. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Good to be here. Welcome, Terry. It's such a pleasure to Absolutely. have you here. Uh, yes. My pleasure. Um, I understand that you're with an organization called Honor Flight. What is that? Honor Flight is, an, is a national program uh, that covers uh, the entire country. Uh, and our, our sole goal is to bring World War II veterans to Washington, D.C. to see the memorial Ooh. that was built and dedicated in 2004. There are probably 160 or 70 flight hubs, which we are one in Laverne, Minnesota, uh, representing Southwest Minnesota. Really? Um, it's, a, it's an organization that we put together, our hub, in, in uh, probably late 2009, in November, we formed the hub. Uh, mostly to bring uh, about 14 to 15, maybe 16 veterans in Rock County who had not been able to see the memorial mm -hmm. and weren't sure that they were going to get to for a variety of reasons. April 30th, 
we flew our first 110 veterans to Washington, oh, D.C. That's outstanding. Nice. Uh, that's and outstanding. we have our second flight scheduled and planned for October 1, so we'll be taking another 110. That's so great. It's, it's oh, awesome. Wonderful, wonderful. So it began, can you tell us a little bit how the organization yeah, began? Certainly. What, and, you what know, it's really an interesting story. Mm -hmm. In 2004, when the uh, memorial was built and dedicated, mm -hmm. we had already lost 65% of the World War II veterans oh, in this country. I didn't realize that. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, oh. It is amazing. In 2005, a retired Air Force captain, I think it was, a 27-year veteran, was hired by the Department of Veteran Affairs to run a small clinic in Springfield, Ohio. Okay. Mm -hmm. While he was uh, attending to his clients, he would ask these gentlemen or ladies if they thought that they would ever have a chance to see the memorial. And most of the responses were, well, I hope so. I think so, if somebody can take me. Hmm. Oh. And it would go on like this. And the next year, he asked, did you ever have a chance to see your memorial? And he said, the first guy that he asked that question to said, no, I wasn't able to. And asked why. And he says, well, I just couldn't get there. My family couldn't afford to take me. Hmm. Oh. And he was also a, a pilot. He's a, he has a private pilot's license. Mm -hmm. And he said, could I take you? Would you go if I would take you? And he mm. said the guy broke down and cried. Mm. Oh my. Oh. And that started it. Uh -huh. He took the, the gentleman to Washington, D.C., took care of him for a day, flew him there at no cost to him. Oh, that's oh. awesome. Those, those are the two premises of Honor Flight. First, there's no cost to the veteran, mm -hmm. and you have to take care of them while they are there. Mm -hmm. Well, he knew that he had something going on, so he invited pilots from his association to also fly with him. And they took 12 airplanes and oh took my goodness. And, and <clears throat> one, wow. one to two in each one of them and flew to Washington, D.C. And that was the first oh. inaugural flight. That and by the end, that was, that was in May of 2005. And by August, the demand was so great that they started using oh. commercial airlines. My. Last year, we took somewhere between 35 and 37,000 veterans to Washington, oh. D.C. across the country. This year, it probably doubled. Well, Sally Sue, that was a great guest. Oh, yes, sure was, Bobby Ray and Bobby Ray. <laughs> Remember our musical guest? <laughs> Sally Sue, how could I forget? Oh. If I remember, whenever we have a musical guest, oh. You become, shall I say, a bit starstruck? Oh, I just can't help it. We have such incredible performers. Well, let's take a look. Okay, let's. Okay. This song is, uh, this is, about, this is about something that we could all use a little bit more of. It's a song about and called Time. Is this a dream? Is this for real? Is this exactly how I kind of knew I would feel? I'm seeing the light, oh yeah. Now am I a king? Am I a fool? Am I the winner? Am I just bending the rules? I'm seeing the light, oh yeah. And I know when I'm in doubt that time will help me out. And in the here and now, time will show me how. Up on a cloud, then up in the air, up and then back to the ground where it's all disrepair. I'm seeing the light, oh yeah. And filling my heart is all of the times and all of the places that I once again was alive. And seeing the light, oh yeah. I guess it's no surprise that time don't compromise. I know I can depend on time like an old friend. Time will heal the pain And 
when I search for more, yeah, time will open doors. But if I'm left behind, no time, she will not rewind. So I'll make the time to see life shine forever. Well, now it's time to introduce our guest. Yes, and you know what, Sally Sue? What? You need to know that music is my life. Wait a minute. Two weeks ago, you told us mm -hmm. that fashion was your life. Well, I know, but <laughs> truly down deep inside, my burning passion uh -huh. is music. Uh, I see. It, okay. it really is. It no. really is. Okay, I understand. And I want to tell you, we have a treat today. <gasps> Because we have a musical talent all the way from the big city of Mankato. All the way oh, from yeah, Mankato? Yes, yes. Oh. On our show today, oh. ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming none other than Lonesome Ron. Oh, I'm telling you. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Well, thank you, and it's really good to be here today. Oh, well, Lonesome, it's so great to have you in Sweet Swine County. Yes, it is. It's a joy. Oh. Well, well, when you called, um, I had just gotten a call from the women of Sweet Swine County, and they uh, wanted me to be on their show, but I didn't get back to them, and then you called. Well, Lonesome, I was walking past the ladies' dressing room, and I happened to overhear them making a phone call about booking you. Now, I would, we would never try to steal another guest, but I thought, what a great idea. And so I was calling to see if there was a chance we might be able to book you later. Is yes, what I was I, I'm sure we would never do anything no, like no, that. No. So, <laughs> Lonesome, mm -hmm. can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your music? Well, sure I can. I do a lot of songs from the Old West, like Home on the Range, and I write an old paint, and a lot of tunes from the singing cowboys of the 1930s, and I even write a lot, a lot of my own about the Old West and, and the Old Midwest as well. Wow, wow, Lonesome. Could you sing a song for us? Sure can. Oh, great. Love to. That'd be great. Could you maybe get a cold cloth for Sally Sue, too? Oh. Just a thought. Okay, let's hear now from Lonesome Ron. Okay, now when I was growing up, I was watching all these westerns on TV, and I noticed that a lot of them took place in Colorado and Arizona and Texas, but none of them took place in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And I always thought they should make a singing cowboy movie that took place in Minnesota. And I wrote a song that I thought if they ever do that, this song will be waiting for them. Oh, oh good. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I've ridden in the Rockies of Wyoming And underneath the Arizona sky Been north to Idaho And the trail to Mexico And lived among the Colorado pines I've traveled through the desert of Sonora Across the Texas plains to San Antonio but when it's late at night and the stars are shining bright, I miss my Cannon River Valley home. Take me to the hills of California Or on a riverboat to New Orleans Across the Rio Grande Or up to Texarkan Or to the bluegrass land of Tennessee You can put me on a fast train through Montana But when I'm wandering all alone my thoughts begin to stray at the end of every day back to my Cannon River Valley home. Incredible. 
Bobby Ray, what do you say we show the folks another one? You know, I think that's a great idea, oh, Sally Sue. Let's yes. look at another one. I think it's a great idea. When the barn's on fire, let it burn down to the ground. When the barn's on fire, let it burn down to the ground. Cause in the smoke and the ashes, you never know what can be found. And when the love's long gone, let it run, run away. When the love's long gone, let it run, run away. Cause you can't make a wonder and love wanna stay. When the barn's on fire, let it burn down to the ground. When the barn's on fire, let it burn down to the ground. Cause in the smoke and the ashes, you never know what can be found. I go out to the country to find my peace of mind Yeah, I go out to the country to find my peace of mind But a cold, hungry ghost is all I could find So when the barn's on fire, let it burn down to the ground When the barn's on fire, let it burn down to the ground It's in the smoke and the ashes you never know it can be found. Oh my, I have to say, again, incredible. You know, Sally Sue, I hate to say it, but when you're right, oh. you're right. Of course. <laughs> you give me credit where credit's due. Exactly. You know, Sally Sue, I pride myself as quite a musical buff. Oh, really? I personally book all of the musical acts for our show. So if you should be wondering who the genius is behind these, you're sitting right next to him. Oh, uh, well, honey, I have to say, good job. Thank you. Good Thank, job. You. Thank you. Appreciate it. And that. ladies and gentlemen, throughout our story con country, there have been many people who have had interesting hobbies. That's true. Very true. And here are a couple that have been our guests. Well, let's take a look. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to bring out our guest. As you know, we here on the Cockerbird Morning Show love to share with you interesting people and Absolutely. places. Yes. And today we truly have an interesting person we do. who has an interesting hobby. Mm -hmm. Join me in welcoming Bart Saxton. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I'm from Fairmont here originally. Oh. Went away for a while, but I'm back again. I live out by Northrop, uh, and uh, I'm a computer support specialist. Very good. That, do you work out of your home, or do you in the area? Or? Work for modern office systems. I'll be darned. That's well, that great. sounds great, Bart, but what do you do for fun? I like to do medieval reenactments. I wondered if that might have something to do with what you were wearing. Really? Okay. So I have a very modern job during the week, and on the weekends, I drift off to the 13th century. Where would we see your production, or where would you have this on display? We don't really do it as a spectator activity. Okay. This is, uh, it's more fun if you actually do it than if you just stand and watch. I see, okay. One of the few requirements the organization has is that you make an attempt at pre-17th century clothing. To participate. Oh, okay. So, and this 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 would be, be an attempt. Just look at yeah. listen. Now, did you, really where, did you make that, or did? Fortunately, no. I bought the chain okay. shirt. Okay. And there are companies that produce this. Oh yes. Oh yes. Okay. And a lot of people within the organization produce it as well. So there, are, there are times when I've been with Sally Sue that I kind of wish I'd have had that. I just, <laughs> just, just <laughs> I'm sorry. It was just a little joke. Would protect you from the slings and arrows of adversity. Absolutely. <laughs> Very well. So I couldn't have said it better myself. Are you going to get one, honey? I don't know. Oh, okay. I'm thinking about the it. The logo um, that's on your shirt is that significant uh, symbol uh, that's, for you? Or? That's my coat of arms. 
within Your the organization. Oh, okay. Yes. okay. Um, properly blazons, it's argent, which is the heraldic term oh, for yes. white. Oh, okay. A sheep. Oh, okay. Rampant, okay. the okay. sinister sable, or in other words, a black rampant sheep within a red border ghoul. Oh, okay. What they call ghouls. Oh, so, okay. okay. Argent, a sheep, rampant, a sinister ghouls. So when you travel off to the 13th century, do you have others travel with you? Or are you out there by yourself? I'm just <laughs> a little curious. <laughs> nope. Um, there's, uh, there's events just about every weekend really? that I go to. Um, I don't get to all of them, obviously. It's uh, the group's called the Society for Creative Anachronisms. Ooh. It's an international organization. I believe last I heard there was around 40,000 paid members. In August every year in Pennsylvania, there's an event they would call the Penzik War, which has, I think last I heard, 14,000 people showed up for it. Now, when you Ooh. go to one of these events, do you um, have encampments or, um, I don't know if you would say tents or, you know, that type of thing? Yeah, what did they live in in up? the 13th or century? Yes, we do. And, uh, <laughs> yes, we do. All of the above. All the above. Depending okay. on what the event is. Sure. Obviously, in the winter, camping events aren't terribly popular. No, mm, I wouldn't no. think so, especially in a metal suit. <laughs> especially in a metal suit. Um, so, you know, Holiday Inn would be an excellent choice in the winter. Mm -hmm. but, okay. and in, but in the summer, like the Penzik War, that's about a full week, 10-day camping trip. Really? Um, lots of Ooh. weekend events in the summer where mm -hmm. you camp out over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Tell us what takes place. I like to call it the good parts of the Middle Ages. We do all the fun okay. things from Middle Ages and try to skip over the bad parts. Okay. No, nobody recreates the plague. Okay. That's, so that's a good yeah. idea. Skip over that. That's a great idea. And uh, the battle reenactments we have are what you would call chivalrous combat. Oh. Oh, okay. We're not out. It's not all an out war. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and we have very stringent safety requirements on the equipment, the armor, the behavior to make sure it's as safe as possible. But we get out in armor with shields, and instead of swords, we use sticks because they invented lawyers since the Middle Ages. Oh, <laughs> probably not one of the greatest inventions, but I understand. Um, unlike fencing, the contact has to be a solid blow. It can't just be a touch. Okay. So you have to have pretty good armor. But we also do tournaments, feasts, balls. Um, oh, really? A wide range of the arts and crafts of the Middle Ages are recreated. Do you want individuals to come and visu visualize or see what's going on or visit these programs? Personally, I think everyone should come out and okay. play with us. All right. Good. Yeah. Especially so where do you find more information on this then? The easiest <clears throat> way is the web. Okay. okay. It's kind of bad to mention the web when you're dressed like you're from the 13th century. <laughs> uh, the base website to start with would be www.sca.org. Okay. That would be the overall organization, the Society for Creative Anachronism. Right now, why don't we invite our guest <gasps> out today? Yes. I'm telling you, I'm excited about this. I am too. I oh. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, our guest today is well known on national TV, has been on various talk shows. We are so pleased and proud to have with us today Martin County's own. Tron guy, Jay Maynard. Yay! Welcome, Jay. Yay! Welcome. Welcome. Welcome, Jay, to our mm -hmm. show. It's a delight to have you here. I'm happy to be here. Jay, it is a pleasure to have you here, but I have a question. Mm -hmm. Where in the heck did you get that suit? <laughs> I had it custom made. Really? Um, the, uh, the, 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 the characters in the movie Tron, if you right, look, right. Uh, their, their bodies are all green and, and, the po folks who, uh, other folks who made costumes like this, they tended to make them out of white, and I felt that was kind of, you know, kind of wimping out on it. Mm -hmm. So I actually went to Fleet and picked this color huh. of paint and painted up the identity disc here identity disc. and sent it off to a lady who I dealt with before and had her make the unitard custom to my size and, cust wow. and match the color. Wow. That, is, that so, is very unique. So mm -hmm. what did you use? I mean, there's, there's soft this pieces, is, hard pieces. Yes, what did you mm -hmm. use to make the, it? The soft pieces are all cotton spandex. Okay. Uh, it's actually one one piece covers the entire body. Oh, really? Um, this is the same kind of hockey helmet that they actually used oh. in the movie. Hmm. Um, and that's and an actual hockey that's helmet? That's an actual Cooper hockey helmet. Wow, yeah, and identity you have all the wire? Identity disc. That's the identity disc. Genuine, Look at that. genuine wow. whammo. Uh, <laughs> this is... This, this is form PVC, and that's a football shoulder guard. Oh, uh, really? Wow. Well, I'm, wow, you know, amazing. And I understand, because I've watched a couple of your national 
Oh, broadcast yes. programs. Impressive. All very much so. Yes. And I and I want to know how the web helped you. But before you answer that, I think I'd like to give our viewers a treat. And let's see what Tron Guy looks like. <gasps> Lit up, lights off. <gasps> oh. Louie, hit the lights. Oh, oh, oh wow. That was I loved it. Wow. So now, as I was asking you now, how did the web help this all take off for you? Uh, without the web, it wouldn't have happened at all. Okay. Wow. As I was making the costume, I was getting help from a lady in New York City. Really? really? So getting from here to New York City wow. is not something you just jump in your car and drive across town no. to do. Yeah. Yeah. So I took pictures as I was going along and, and put them together for a web page for her so she could see the progress and give me hints. When it was done, I said, okay, fine. Maybe other folks would like to make a costume like this. So I put the page up on the web for everybody to look at. And it became one of those pages that everybody emailed all their friends. Hey, you got to go check out this web page. And so and without the web, right. it wouldn't have happened at all. That's amazing. Wow, I love seeing those guests again. I know. Seems like yesterday, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. It's amazing. What do you say we show a couple more? Oh, good idea. I think we should. Our viewers yes. are going to like it. Let's do that. Now, what do you say we bring out our guest? Ladies and gentlemen, from the County of Rock in the town of Laverne, I would like to welcome Vance Walgrave. All right. Welcome. Thank you. Glad Good to have you here. Oh. You know, I'm curious, you did you have a company or but the company's called those blasted things? I'm I'm just curious, how did how did that all come about, the name and the company and all that? Well, it started out about 25 years ago. My wife Becky and I started a memorial company, Cemetery Memorials, Laverne Monuments. And we bought the equipment to sandblast, do memorials. And when we saw what it could do, the creative side kind of took mm -hmm. over. Ooh. And we started blasting a lot of yard rocks, small rocks, big rocks, and everything else like that. And when we opened in our location here, pre this one here 10 years ago, we thought, okay, if we call it Laverne Monuments, no one's going to come into our rock shop. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. And if we call it Those Blasted Things, who's going to buy a monument called Those Blasted <laughs> Things? <Yeah>. True. So <coughs> we are two names in the same location. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. That makes sense. So totally how many years have you been in business? The memorial... For 25 years. 25 and the blasted things for, for 10, 10 years. years. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Interesting. Now, you, I'm, I'm still curious. How did you happen to get into this business? Into the rock side? Yes. Um, I was one of these little boys that always came home with pockets full of rocks. <laughs> and now I have bigger rocks. And wow. yet, and we, my wife and I, in the wintertime, close our store for a month Ooh. and we travel all over the southwest Ooh. and we collect rocks truck loads of rocks oh, really? wow. and we haul them back to our store so everything is personally picked out and yet when i walk down to the rock river on a sandbar or something like that i still come home with pockets full of rocks and uh. most of them are leverites really? my dad always said Leave it right where you found it. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it right. I like that. That's really interesting. Now, you know, I've heard that you have some really unusual items in your store. Um, outside of the rocks that you were talking about, um, fossils, and even meteorites? Yep. <gasps> really? And now, how do you dis make that decision of what to put in your store? It is a case of my wife and I only buy stuff we think is really cool. <clears throat> you know, Sally Sue just mentioned that there are unusual things in your store. What are some of the most unusual you have in your store? Um, <clears throat> for one, <gasps> a woolly mammoth tooth. You're kidding me, that's a and tooth? Wait a minute. I thought it was a crown. <laughs> well, and tooth, crown. This, could, this is oh. the chew side. Look, it's so rough. Wow. And we also have woolly mammoth tusks. Is that what this came out of as well, was a woolly that mammoth? That was a woolly mammoth. Really? Yeah. yeah. And you have wow. the tusks too? Yep. And I have part of one right here, <gasps> right there. Oh, and goodness. And you can see from the wear on here, um, from the animals rubbing against trees. Now, wow. is that, has this been polished or is that just the way it rubbed? 
it's that the wear down has been from the woolly mammoth. That's what I. Yeah, it has been polished up a little bit, cleaned wow. up, but not much. Not it's pretty much, much. Oh. another Ooh. item uh. that um, is kind of that we have among many many things is um, this is a pretty piece of jewelry. Oh, jewelry, of, of like course. Jewelry. Of course. Oh look! Oh. And well, now what kind of rock is that? That is coprolite. Oh, it's that's what again? Very pretty. Coprolite. Coprolite. Also known as dinosaur poop. Petrified <laughs> <laughs> dinosaur poop. Really? Yeah. You know, I, I'm curious as well. Do you do you actually go and find these when you take your trip to the southwest, or are these found and then you acquire them? How does that Most work? Most of the stuff we get is at the big rock shows down. Oh, you know, that's interesting. You're in Rock County, Minnesota, mm -hmm. and you buy rocks. And by the semi load, no less. Yes, we do. Today's guest is from the town of Worthington in Nobles County. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming Marv Spomer from Spomer Classics and Museum. Welcome, Mr. Spomer. Welcome. Thank you, but you can call me Marv. Oh, okay. Well, nice. Okay, Marv, can you um, un tell us a little bit about your museum in the town of Worthington? Yes, be happy to. Uh, the museum was started about, uh, the collection was started about 25 years ago. And about uh, four years ago, five years ago, we decided that we would share the collection with the public. There's a lot of private collections like this, but nothing... Uh, open to the public every day like we've done with this. And what you will see there is not only a collection of cars, there's some very unusual cars and there's some low number built cars, but uh, our main emphasis is on signs. Really? Porcelain, neon signs. And porcelain signs and neon signs is art that's not used anymore. It's a mm. thing in the past. And uh, we have decided to share this with people. So. These, what you will be looking at would be all vintage signs, starting some of them back as, as early as the early 1900s. I'll be done. And the majority of them come out of auto dealerships, but we have expanded our collection to include farm implement signs, uh, lots of automobile memorabilia, farm really? memorabilia, pedal cars, uh, various items that are interest to a lot of different people. Now the, it, we, we kind of, we kind of re renew the, the old days. Sure. Now you mentioned neon signs. I, I didn't realize they weren't making those anymore. There are very few neon signs built really? anymore. Really? Right. Now are these signs donated or did you purchase very them? Good question. They have been purchased. Really? Ooh. And they oh, are wow. from all over the country. Really? In fact, some signs were used in movie props in Hollywood. Well, there you have it, folks. A few of our favorite guests that we've had over the last yes. year. Yes. Now, let's take a look at some of the reports from outside of Sweet Swine County um, over the past year. What? Bobby Ray. What? Bobby, I'm sorry to say. Oh. We're out of time. Okay. Well, you know what? Tell me that we at least have time to thank oh. Oh, them for yes. their reports. Oh, yes. Well, uh, go ahead, We're Sally going soon. to take the time. Okay. Bobby Ray. All right. All right. A special thanks to our cooking host. Oh, yes. Betty. With <laughs> Betty. Yeah, that was a great one. <laughs> Ronnie P. Silage, Silage. Who, oh. who reports in with almost, almost breaking news. Yes, 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 yes. And our roving reporter, your favorite. Clarice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with the way not forgotten. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And our wandering motorist, Cousin Jeff. I like him a lot. Uh -huh, yes. In the passenger seat and book author, Caroline in Memoirs of a Librarian. Quite interesting book, yes, too. Yes, yes, yes. Hey, Sally Sue, thanks to all our reporters, oh, and a special thanks to you, our viewers, yes. who have made this past year just a joy, and for making the Cockleburr Morning Show the most watched morning show in all of Sweet Swine oh, County, yes. and soon to be beyond. Exactly. Now that we're in the cities, yes. the sky's the limit, Sally exactly. Sue. Exactly. And with all kidding aside, we have a lot of fun up here, oh, and uh, none of this could happen without you. You're a wonderful co-host. Oh, it's a pleasure to work yes, with you. It's okay, a to and work I might with share you. my assistant with you eh, once in a while. Oh, okay, please. all right. We are looking forward to season two, yes. where we will continue oh, to yes. weed out the big stories from across Sweet Swine County and beyond. Exactly. So for now, folks, all we can say is bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs>